there's been shared all over the place the last few weeks and a lot of people have been asking me about using artificials as far as drop shots go so I'm just going to run through the basics pretty much you go to your shop your tackle store and you walk in there and there are so many different jig heads around and the hardest part is choosing the right jig head for the right species You'll find some have got very big uh, hooks on them, very heavy duty hooks, and others have got very light ones. For this episode, I am basically talking about shad. So the lighter, the better. Um, why a round head and why a arrow head, if I can call it that? Very simply, a round head, basically, when you're working it, will fall down and your lure will roll to the side imitating a feeding fish like a mullet for instance if you ever go into the harbour and that or watch fish when they're feeding they'll feed 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 and then they roll and you see that like silver flash and that come off of them a round jig head is definitely recommended for jerk minnow fishing now that is a jerk minnow okay it's basically a long slender bait normally with a little V tail on it and the way you work it is you drop it down, jerk it up, drop it down, jerk it up. Very, very simple. The other one that you get is what they call a paddle tail. That's a paddle tail. The tail basically moves from side to side and you do pretty much nothing with it except throw it and wind it very slowly. That does all the action. This one here, you've actually got to do the action for the lure. So it's a lot of twitching in the rod tip. Now, to rig it, it is very very simple. I'm just going to start with this one over here. Okay, round ball head, 25 grams. There's your little um, jerk minnow. The first thing that you're going to look at is the size of the head for the actual size of the lure. Now because this one's very small, this jerk, the, this little jig head will definitely work the best. If it was slightly bigger, what you'd have to do is you'd have to just chop off the tip of the nose just to make this area a lot thicker. So what we're going to do is to measure it up, we take our little jerk minnow and put it next to our uh, jig head and if you can have a look over there where that back part of the hook is and this part come together. That's where you want to make a mark. So what you want to do, it's the furthest part back in your actual lure. So we just make a little mark like that, very simply. And all I'm going to do now is go straight down the center and most of them will give you a line to follow if you do have a problem. But just go straight down the middle and come out where you've made the mark and you cannot go wrong with it. So let's try it guys. Straight down the center, all the way through to where the the markers at the back if you can see there and now I'm just gonna slide it onto my jig head do that and as you can see that is absolutely phenomenal as far as far as length distance where it needs to be set up for catching shad the hook is exposed enough only problem with shad and soft plastics is the shad generally bites the tail so you need to work this quite quite fast and quite erratic so that the shad actually makes a mistake instead of biting the tail off he bites more around the middle area he commits to it basically that is the jerk minnow for shad and that is very very effective so basically it goes down to the bottom hits the sand as you feel it hit the sand you jerk it up jerks up falls back down jerks it rolls jerk it back up and you carry on working it like that and that is a very effective uh, lure as far as soft plastics go for catching shad. The next one is going to be our paddle tail. Not ideal for shad, more for cob. So if there's cob around, this is the kind of lure that you want to throw. Trying to catch shad but also catching cob. Okay, to rig it, very simple.
on the first one we had a very soft thin hook because we are targeting strictly shad for this one because it's cover round we would actually use a bigger thicker hook and you ask why an arrowhead paddle tails are designed to swim straight and this arrowhead there's a keel basically on it you'll find the bottom side is slightly thicker so what it does is when you're throwing it it swims straight the whole time it's as simple as that that's the only reason you have the two different kind of heads and the thicker hook is because there might be cob around and again it's putting the hook and the paddle tail together and just seeing what best suits it okay so I'm just if I can lay it down here and you have a look what you're looking for is the distance between that end bit and that bit there needs to be flush so we just take it there and we just have a look where it is and we just slightly trim it like that now if I put it next to it it should be the exact same size it's not too big not too small I'm just going to mark off on the actual pedal tail now where the hook needs to come out and that's our mark over there again I'm going to slide it straight through the center and we work our way all the way down until we get to the markers guys there's the mark push it through and the reason I use this color just so you can see is that you can actually see in it the hook keepers that the mustard um, jig head has actually got if you can see there it actually looks like the intestines of the bait fish which actually holds that rubber on a lot better and there we go guys that's how it is you can see that the top part of it basically matches up with the top and the bottom matches up with the, the bottom part of the rubber as well makes it more aerodynamic in the water it'll swim a lot better and it looks more natural this one the fishing action is very simple you throw it out depending on the depth I normally count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003 and if I feel I hit the bottom then I know that I'm only in about 3 foot of water if it's a lot deeper uh, count to 1,010 until you can actually feel the, the bottom once you've judged the bottom you can then start pulling it along to try and judge the depth that the actual fish are feeding at for instance if they're halfway in the water column it'll be 1,005 that you count to and then start winding it or if they're right on the bottom and there's cob around 1008. If I have 1010, I tend to hit the actual sand a lot and the, the cob, well the shad don't eat it, but the cob might still eat it. So I always try and keep it a little bit higher off the bottom so that the cob can come up and eat it and of course the shad as well will be milling around, it's eye level with them, better silhouette and yeah they just inhale, in, they just inhale it a lot better if it's eye level rather than having to swim up and down for it. That's it there guys, there's the pedal tail done.